So one of the one of the questions that comes up with the LAIs also is, you know, the patients will say, well, how, can I stop it? You know, and I think the answer is yes, you can stop it. You can't stop it tomorrow, but you can stop it a month from now or two months from now. But you know, then the next question is, well, what if I develop a side effect? You know, am I going to be able to deal with that side effect because I'm still on the drug? And this is something that um, we've looked at, you know, pretty carefully. I think neuroleptic malignant syndrome would probably be one of the most concerning side effects. It's extremely rare amongst pa patients getting long-acting formulations, and there's no evidence from the cases that have developed that the outcome is any worse if someone's receiving injectable medicine as compared to oral medicine. So it's hard to, in general, these medicines are pretty well tolerated. I mean, we talk about metabolic side effects and, and, and some neurologic side effects, but in terms of life-threatening conditions, they're, they're pretty well tolerated. So I think, I think that's a little bit of a red herring, you know, to say, well, I can't stop the drug. And, um, you know, you mentioned earlier the, the three-monthly formulation of paliperidone. That was a question that I think initially came up. People were saying, well, that's a very long interval. The way that medication is used is that no one is going to have the three-month interval until they've been on the once monthly for four months. So you have a chance to see whether someone is tolerating the drug well, how they're doing, and then you can introduce the every three months. And then eventually, I hope there's going to be an every six months. And if you think about somebody who's, you know, maybe a little bit ambivalent about taking medication and you, you realize you only have to get an injection four times a year, and that's a situation where maybe your relatives, your friends, significant others, whatever, can maybe help you, you know, kind of make sure that you're taking advantage of that opportunity. So I kind of worry that with the, the, you know, the idea that you're supposed to take the one month one for four months before you switch over, do you think people really wait that time? You know, I actually have not seen any studies to okay. see you know how it how it's being used. But yeah, I, I mean, I I, I worry I, that people might jump the gun. They might, but yeah. I, I always tell people to try to follow the package insert. Yeah. you know that there's, there's a reason good why idea. It's, there's a reason why it's there. And <laughs> yeah. It's also if you're if you, are you so eager to you know what I mean to switch to the three month that you, you couldn't wait another month. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I wanted to go back to something you said a minute ago, just before I forget, um, just about the idea of the peaks and troughs of oral versus long acting. I, I, I actually didn't know anyone had actually looked at the side effects between long acting injectables and oral medications. I found a uh, meta-analysis that you were involved with. And I was you know, somewhat surprised to find that you really didn't find difference, side effect differences between yeah. oral and long acting yeah, medications. it was very interesting. Well, it cuts both ways. Meaning that um, long acting weren't, weren't, didn't have more side effects than oral, right. uh, but the expected uh, finding of maybe oral would be worse because of the fact that you have these peak concentrations wasn't also borne out. I, I can't see any, any really negatives other than the um, injection and the, you know, whatever the additional effort needed with long acting. It seems to me that to have this mode of administration with uh, constant uh, bioavailability is a potential advantage. And I would really be interested in seeing head-to-head -head efficacy studies uh, uh, on this done. Um, I remember there was an article that Saul Snyder and uh, Larry Toon wrote, this is dating us, uh, John, um, many years ago, where they looked at the pharmacodynamic effects of, of flufenazine administered uh, by oral and by uh, decanoate forms, and um, I forget exactly what the variables they were measuring, but suggesting that uh, it was a more efficient therapeutic uh, mode of action. 